gone up this morning to some happy tidings. John Boehner, the supreme rhino, the man who's been blocking the repeal of partial birth abortion, the man who's been blocking the repeal of Obamacare, is going to resign in October. It was Congressman Walter Jones in the last year that really launched the move to organize a movement to remove Boehner from the speakership. He was on with us about a month ago. They moved in the House uh, to try to block a vote to remove Boehner or to call for a leadership change. And they learned they didn't have the votes, so they had to stand down. Since then, there have been major movements beneath the surface of the waters to remove him. So believe me, you're going to get the absolute inside baseball coming up in the second hour with Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, a true patriot. He's also trying to release the 28 pages of the 9-11 report showing that Saudi Arabia quarterbacked the attack's bare minimum. That's why InfoWars is so important. We broke the Benghazi Stinger missile story first. We've been the spearhead on countless other issues and the system is afraid of us because we can push a story that isn't getting attention into the mainstream. And it's been my job to try to get other people up and running and other organizations up and running so that we're not the only organization that can effectively do this. Obviously out of self-preservation, but more importantly out of the fact that we need more people aware of what's happening and taking action. And that's why I put out a video that I taped last night at like 8 o'clock at night that we launched this morning that's on Infowars.com, red linked, Obama plans to shut down news organization. Now, they tried to shut down News Corp. They tried to shut down Rush Limbaugh. I mean, they had him arrested for Viagra. Remember? And I'm not a, a total fan of Limbaugh. And Limbaugh's for the police state, even though it's attacked him. And I'm up against Limbaugh and all the rest of it. But I don't have fantasies that if Limbaugh had a heart attack or if Limbaugh was arrested, I'd be filling his shoes. Because there's all these idiots out there that go, if we bring down Alex Jones, we'll get his audience. No, it'll dissipate, fools. It's just crazy. But if we don't hang together, we hang separate, to quote Benjamin Franklin. I said support Rush Limbaugh when he was under attack. And when he was being boycotted, I said, don't let Obama indict News Corps for the hacking scandal. Because whether it happened or not, this White House is so criminal, it's trying to shut down the free press. And if they can take down Limbaugh or they can take down Rupert Murdoch, they can take down anybody. Dinesh D'Souza got thrown in prison for nine months for doing something that wasn't even illegal. If you look at the statutes, they have indicted the Texas attorney general who was fighting Obama. The word is they're investigating the governor. And I have that from the highest levels. The governor's followed around everywhere. They're digging through Abbott's garbage. This isn't a game. There is a war on the press. It's unprecedented. And I had an FBI source over a year ago, and another one as well that was more of an informant threatening me on a separate issue. But an FBI source inside, and you know we get all these documents, MIAC, Homeland Security. I mean, we really get these. We're willing to put them out. Other folks get them, too. They're just too scared. And they said, listen, I don't know what's going on, but you are under major surveillance. And the, and the feds have been told, dig something up on you. And so you're being given this warning. And I know you don't think you're doing anything wrong, but, man, don't speed and, you know, just watch your butt. Well, they couldn't dig anything up. They thought it'd be too political, so then they went to the Federal Trade Commission. And they went to other, other commissions to have them dig in. And that's what they've been doing, is running around with white gloves, trying to find something to come after us. And hey, I just see it, we've hit the big time. It's a great badge of honor. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. It is the Friday Worldwide Transmission, the 25th day of September 2015. I, uh, of course, will return this Sunday, Lord willing, 4 to 6 p.m. I will be hosting the Sunday transmission. David Knight and Jakari Jackson will be reporting from New York City today in the third hour and joining me Sunday as well. We have Congressman Walter Jones, who spearheaded the movement to have John Boehner step down. 
People lost their committee memberships, their committee chairmanships. They were targeted. Uh, election money, uh, war chests were piled up to remove them from office. But Walter Jones of North Carolina led the charge and will be giving us the inside scoop on why Boehner announced this morning that he will be resigning from Congress in October. Congressman Jones was on with us one month ago this week, one month ago Wednesday, so 32 days ago. And he broke down the fact that they had the votes to get it out of committee. They were going to try to move to have a vote to block it, but Boehner didn't have the votes and so didn't know what to do. Well, now the word is, you'll get it directly from Congressman Jones, is they had the votes, they were going to move next week to remove him. This is another devastating victory against the globalist. The fight now goes to who will go in the ascension of the speakership if the neocons and the rhinos will be able to block the Tea Party rebellion that the Democrats and Republicans have combined forces together to block. That's why the Tea Party has been audited, indicted, harassed. That's why military uh, veteran organizations have been harassed. It's why anyone who is a basic classic American has been under attack is because they know we're popular. They know we have the cure to globalist tyranny. They know that we can bring this country back to greatness. And the globalists are moving on every front to finish this country and Europe once and for all. So the great battle has now been joined. Many people just want to go through life and be left alone. Many people uh, don't have confidence in themselves, so even if they're being bullied, they'll put up with it. I caught myself this morning uh, after I did some elliptical lifting weights, absolutely enthusiastic and happy and proud of myself and satisfied to a degree that I have never been. I felt so manly, so honorable, so good that my conscience was giving me a type of energy I've never felt in my life. Because when I got some of the news in the last year and more news yesterday confirming it, that there's a major FBI white collar crime task force directly under Obama and the Justice Department, the Attorney General, with upwards of 20 people working 15 hours a day to find out some way to put me in prison and to shut down InfoWars. I wasn't scared when I confirmed it, but I still was upset by it. My mind was working. I didn't lose any sleep about it. And then this morning, I was just thinking about all the innocents being chopped up, all the babies. I was thinking about the globalists destabilizing all these countries, the fluoride in the water, the cancer viruses and the vaccines, and how they want to keep their war quiet, underground, their geoengineering, basically invisible. They want to carry out their operation with everybody just in a trance. And the mere fact that we reach over a billion people a month via social networks, we have that from Google's own analytics. We, we, we actually show it in the video that's on Infowars.com. Obama plans to shut down news organization. The fact that we reach hundreds of millions of people every month on different video platforms, a million people a day on a podcast, five million people a day now on radio. I mean, it really is massive. And, and the globalists already know it's massive. And I knew launching a TV network that's going to grow slowly and just be a new avenue in their dinosaur brains would really freak them out and scare them, and it certainly has. But thinking about my forebearers, thinking about the founding fathers, thinking about the founders of Texas, thinking about my ancestors in England and the things they did, I just really in my gut, in my spirit, understood that I was beginning to approach the stairs to their ranks. And that's the most valuable thing in the world. It isn't fancy cars or big houses or hot tubs or Caribbean beaches that matter in the final equation. It is being honorable. It is standing up for what's right. It's being a good person. And it is upholding your family name. And I can truly be proud of what I've done. Not on some power trip, not in an arrogant way. I've always felt like I haven't done enough.
I've always felt like I haven't gone far enough. And if you notice, I've turned the heat up as of late. I've really gotten aggressive and really said what I think and gone to a whole other level of aggressiveness because I knew in my gut that that was the right thing to do. And my gut, my spirit, said right back to my conscious mind, yes, now you're lined up with God. Now you're doing what you're supposed to do. And with that, it will draw down the fire of the enemy. But that is expected. We're losing everything. We're becoming enslaved. We're becoming soulless. Because we have been intimidated, we have been cowed, we have been trained to cower on our knees, on our bellies, licking the boots of the system, and then we see the arrogance, the craziness, the chutzpah, the bravada, the hubris of the elite, and it's just mind-blowing. Hillary Clinton looks like a breeze would blow her over. Janet Yellen's having many strokes on TV and can hardly talk. We're simply ruled by piles of trash because we've given in to fear of them and the black uniforms and the jack boots and all the rest of it. And I can really say I am free. I knew when I crossed the threshold, bullhorning Bilderberg in 2006, and they sent Richard Holbrook out when I did it, I could feel I was passing a line to another level of opportunity for freedom, but also danger. And I loved every minute of it. And I've passed other lines as well. But launching a TV network that'll take years to grow is only a sign to them to remind them of the indomitable human spirit that refuses to submit. It only reminds them of human empowerment and empowered individuals and the fact that we don't cower in fear to the system. They can't stand that. And so they know full well if word gets to me of what's going on, I'll come on air and talk about it. And they think you're cowards and that you're then going to roll over in fear and not become involved because, oh, my gosh, the big bad government might come get you. Let me explain something. We've gone from 1 in 25,000 to 1 in 58 with autism. The CDC saying by 2025, 1 in 3, maybe 1 in 2. They already came for us. They came for our kids. They already killed 55 million babies. They already keep them alive and sell their organs. They already came for us. They've been putting fluoride in the water for 60 years, massive IQ reductions, massive cancer increases. Harvard even admits it. They already came for us. We already got pancreatic cancer, liver cancer, cancer of the bladder, cancer of the kidneys, up multi-thousand percent. They already came for us. They already drove down our wages, shut off our power plants, got rid of our jobs, destroyed our culture, and now are on the news again. This time, mainstream British newspapers legitimizing pedophilia yesterday. They're promoting pedophilia on TV as if it's good. They already came, folks. They already got us. We're already slaves. And my very cells, my cells, cannot go along with this. I am a slave to standing up to tyranny. I'm a slave to conscience. I'm a slave to Jesus Christ, but I chose to be. You people that are slaves to evil, I don't even know what planet you think you're living on. What a pathetic God you serve, you cowards. You think you're being given power on this planet to carry out evil? You will pay in this life and you will pay in the next. You don't have to believe in God to know when you do bad stuff, it comes back on you. And so at the bottom of the hour, I'll play the report I'm talking about that I shot in one piece, unedited. They put some articles over it just to document what I'm talking about. But I tell you, it is Kafka-esque. It is 1984 when you sit there on your couch after your kids have gone to bed for like an hour staring out into the starlit sky through the window and you cannot think of anything you've done illegal other than speeding, other than drinking two beers and driving, and you can't think of anything you've done, and then you realize this government's so criminal and so wicked and so bad, they frame people on record, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't make me feel scared or bad, it makes me feel sad for this country.
that we're such a despicably corrupt, wicked, devilish nation.